And the nice thing about oxen compared to uh, a tractor or some other piece of equipment is they can drive right up next to the log and then turn around their own length. And they also provide their own fuel, as you can see. We're going to be talking about hooking up logs to a team of oxen today. And we have Jarrah, Pollux, and Castor here. And we have a log. So we're going to first talk about how we move the log without the animals. And we have several ways of doing that. One is a simple little tool called a hook roon. This is a hook on there, kind of an axe like handle. Kind of roll small logs with that. We also have a cant hook. And that has a blunt end on there with a bit of a hook here. And then a, kind of a wrench like deal here so I can roll the logs toward me roll them away also. There's also a tool for prying that's called a pike. It just has a point on the end. That can be used when you need to get under a log and lift it and push it around. And then there's a tool that's a combination of the can hook and the pike. It has a point and a catch on there and that's called a PV. So some combination of those is what we use for moving the logs when they're on the ground. There also is another variation on that. Historically they used uh, a deal like this sometimes. They only had to carry this with them and they could actually just cut a pole in the woods and set it up like this and use it to roll the logs. A better on a bigger log, I think. But. So that's a simple whole main version. What we want to do first is to put a chain around the log. And we're going to talk about several different ways of, of hooks on the chains to get that to work right. When you go up to a log out in the woods, you first have to get the chain around the log. And that could involve putting the chain down the ground. And rolling the log onto the chain. on like this and that's using a slip hook. The slip hook is easy to hook up, it's easy to unhook also which is kind of nice but it also has a little bit of a problem. If you're out in the woods and you're driving on rough ground, if you go over a bump it can come unhooked which can be kind of a problem. So there's another version of that system. uses a loop so it makes a little noose and then it catches a log like that and they very seldom come unhooked so they're a little nicer for that reason. There is a variation on the slip hook, which has a little, a small opening here. So it's still relatively easy to hook up, but it doesn't come unhooked easily. Once that one's on there, it holds pretty good and it doesn't seldom comes off. One 
another thing that's kind of nice when you're out in the woods, you don't always have a nice flat ground like we have here. So if you need to get the chain around there and you can't easily roll the log, you can use a little tool like this. This is just a little homemade hook. Shove it under the log. kind of the hook and pull it through and that can save you a lot of work if you can get that to work for you go to it like that and I should probably put that the other way it'll be less likely to come off now that logs hooked up and ready to go if you have larger logs like this one in the background here You can use a pair of log tongs. They're designed just to go on there, kind of like this. And the animals can hook up to that and pull. And when they pull on this, it tightens up the two parts of the tong and pull it tight. So as long as there's tension on there, it stays tight and you can keep dragging the log. Okay. Man. It's the wrong side on that. Uh, yeah, that hook's a little big. We'll see. It'll probably work. All right. Okay. Now Jerry's going to dry them around a little bit, and hopefully the tongs will stay on there. I'm going to step away because you want to be careful with logs. They too. Oops. Uh, all right, we did it. Right now what we're doing of course is out in the open where there's not a, too many obstacles. When you're in the woods it becomes a lot more challenging to maneuver around. But you can see the log can roll right around with that tong on there and as long as there's tension on the chain they usually will stay on there pretty good. Just a second. I'm going to hook this other chain onto there, and then you can pull them both. Okay, I'm going to take our other log and roll it over closer to that one, and then we'll hook the chain onto the other chain. Okay, probably got enough to reach that. Yeah, not quite. We're ready. ready? Yep. All right. Take it back to the sawmill. Uh, you can just move it around here and leave it out here. All right. Come up. Come up. Hold it. Whoa. Oh. 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 That's one of the disadvantages of these things. That'll work better now. Okay. Got proud. Come up. Now that should spin itself around to straighten out. And it did. And these are relatively small logs. If we were using really big logs, we would use the arch. That would help pick the front end of the log up and be able to haul a much larger log. Yeah, these are some of the ways that we move the logs around here when we're hooking them up. Of course, we're not in the woods yet. We will get out to the woods with our next series of videos. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>